And if you Sarah, get... you, you inspire me. I, I was thinking about something. Uh, yeah. I've been doing a little bit of interviewing myself. Uh, All you have to do is stay a minute. Just take your time. The clock is ticking. So stay. All you have to do is stay. Yes, uh, what's going on, everybody? Woo! Long day today, man. Had a long day today. Earlier today, I was uh, in an interview with my girl, Honey Bunny. That was an awesome interview right there. But I got on the road and drove all day into the night. Yes, sir. But what makes this night so special, though? I'm on the road, and I get a, I get a text from a phone number. I did not know who the phone number was. I get a text and he was like, yo, I'm ready to holler at you for a minute. And I'm like, who's this? But I'll tell you guys who it is in a minute. Hey, my name's Lockout Men. I'd like to welcome you guys to the Lockout Men podcast show. What's going on with you guys? If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. If you want to support the channel, you can do that by way of the coffee app or the cash app. It doesn't matter. Hook a brother up with some coffee, man. I'm 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 thirsty up in this piece. I'm thirsty. Well, in this episode of the podcast this evening, man, like I said, this gentleman, this gentleman called me uh, or texted me up and I was like, yo, who is this? And then he came back with the name. So who I would like to bring on to the show, my man, Trucker Jim. <laughs> Live with yes. the lockdown, man. Yes, sir. Up, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. We, we <laughs> at. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me uh, give a little background because I, I've yeah. been, I've been following this man every since and it's kind of ironic that we used to we we used to work for us express we I, i'm not even sure if we even bumped into each other if we did i never i never know who this guy was but he started his uh he started his youtube journey uh when he got with us express just around the same time as i started mine and uh and now he is here Trucker Jim, what's going on with you, brother man? Oh, just getting excited, man. I've got a, a, a big announcement and I didn't know how to do it on my channel, so I said, well, let me let me practice a little bit with the lockout man. Okay. But yeah, I remember when we met. Like I I think I'm man, I don't put like five hundred YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Uh but this was probably somewhere in the teens. When we we crossed paths back in 2015. Okay. And I I just figured out how you could uh you know copy a link from your YouTube channel and, and text it to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know that that wasn't always a thing. You know, Wait. but early into to learning that, and I, I think I I texted you one of my YouTube videos. You know what? Me, be honest. Me and you came an awful well i i was on youtube like way before i got into the trucking game but but being in the trucking game me and you both came a, came I wasn't. a long way yeah we we came my trucking and youtube started mm -hmm. simultaneously i you know what i remember I, if i'm not mistaken i remember the very first video that you did in the um that you did at the uh hotel you you told people you was like this is my very first video. Cars for the last seven, eight years have sold insurance, predominantly life insurance. Had some success with it, won a few contests and things. I did something I've never done before. I drove an 18-wheeler. I'm in my second week of truck driving school at the Truck Driving Institute. The ad that uh, attracted me to it said, uh, change your life in three weeks. So if it's grainy, I'll just work it out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know I, I say that was my first one but there was one before that uh with it had some goats and and they were foster 
children at the time. It, we it took them out for Halloween, mm-hmm. and um, I, I put some music behind it, and you know, that was the first one on YouTube, and then trucking began. So trucker Jim, man, tell and tell, I hadn't stopped. Oh yeah, no, you no, you still hot. I I gotta give it to you. You still hot. You you kind of you kind of slack. No, no you I'm not. Went, I'm not. No, you you, you went you in hibernation. Stuff like that. it's been no. horrible. No, my, you went my, in hibernation, my, bro. My audience is hating it. No, you. Well, was, I did. You yeah. went in a hibernation. That's all. That's all. I mean, I mean, people. I mean, if you guys go to this man's channel, make sure you go to it. It's Trucker Jim on YouTube. Um, his hey, ch- here's here's what I want everybody to see. Mm-hmm. You probably don't even know about my rap video, do you? Yeah, I know about your rap video, man. The one, the, which one is it? You know about the, trucking time rap? The, the, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. The the walk in my shoes? Or the, oh, wait, no, wait, wait. The one no, that you did three months Elvis ago. Song. It's my stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, the the yeah. one that you did three months ago. Okay, yeah. Yeah, trucking time rap. 56, 50, turn it all around. Turn it around. 500 miles in just four days. What? That's how this mother trucker gets paid. But my, my son, he kind of came up with the beat of that, and you know, I dropped some lyrics, and we started playing around with it. And about a day, we had that. Your son, your son is in fun. a band, right? He's in a couple bands. Yeah, yeah. You uh, it, it was one video on your uh on your YouTube. Uh, that you that you did when you went uh, that you was on home time, and you 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 took your you know you took your viewers uh, on a night out with you, and you took them to you know to see your son's band, and he's actually he's actually pretty good. I right? did that a few times, you know, analytically and comment wise. If my videos ain't about trucking. My audience usually like gives me some shit about it. Uh, you know what? Don't 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 worry. And I've done a bunch that ain't trucking too, man. A bunch. Don't don't worry about that, bro. But, that's that's how it always is with you, oh, man. I, well, I'm I'm not worried about it, but ironically enough, I'm I'm getting ready to give them what they want. Mm 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 mm. Well, hold on, hold up, Trucker Jim, before you make that announcement. Hold on, very right quick. <laughs> Let's let's uh let's go. Yeah, we'll 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 get a conversation in before we. Yeah, get let's work. yeah let's get back. Let's um, uh, let's uh get the let's let the people know who you are, man. So where you you know where you from, bro? From the Carolina. I'm in my mid forties, but I don't look it, especially now. I'm, like my weight and facial hair has changed a whole lot over the last uh, five years, but. I, re- I really feel I'm in the best shape I've been in a long time now because I've been doing kickbox three okay. times a week. Okay. But where people will kind of first knew me was Jim and Boone's trucking journey. Like exactly. you had mentioned that with, with U.S. Express. And yep. After I got off a trainer's truck, first time I went home, my pug got on, on board Boone. And he was with me through, <laughs> I don't know how many teammates. Probably, probably three, and then students probably had at least four of those trucking all over. You know, you know when there's two people in a truck, you go everywhere. Exactly. He went everywhere with us. So it's so. J- and we were so, making YouTube videos the whole time. So how 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 is Boom? Because he haven't been with you uh, since you he's left not, U.S. Express. Thanks, Brad. He's not. The, He's not here with me right now, man. Um, what? No. He had been. Well, he, he's over at my mom. Oh, but, um, okay, okay, Jim. Don't four. scare me, man. Don't don't scare me. <laughs> well, be scared because he's not doing good, man. He's got congestive heart failure. That's why he's over there instead of here by himself, twelve hours a day long. Uh-huh. And. And he does his hacking thing, and he don't feel good. And he don't even want to come upstairs. Aww. But he's he's pushing thirteen years old. Yeah, that's a cute little cute little pug, man. He he was in the, at during the U.S. Express, uh, during the U.S. Is, I'm going to say season. So during the U.S. Express season, man, you know, it was a joy watching you and your uh, little pug go, you know. <laughs> 
Uh, I, I wish I would have put more of him in there than I did, man. He looked so young and funky back then. Yeah. He's all grayed up now. <laughs> you say he's all grayed up now, huh? Oh, yeah, man. I got the pictures. I look like I share them with you or whatever. Um, what's, um, so, uh, so U.S. Express, man, that, that was your, that, that was your first, um, first trucking gig. How did, did you, how did you get your CDLs? Did you get it through, through U.S. Express or did you had, get it from an outside? No, no, I went to the Truck Driving Institute in Richburg, South Carolina, just a little outside of Charlotte on the, on the South Carolina side. Mm-hmm. But it was one of those deals you go and stay in a hotel room all week for three weeks. At the end of it, you take your CDL there. Oh, okay. And I failed mine the first time, so I had to come back and take it again. And then I started with U.S. Express. All right. Now, what made – now, how, how did you jump into U.S. Express? Did they send somebody – did they send somebody to the to the school and told you about U.S. Express or you? Uh, yeah, you, you it's probably own. the most boring recruiter out of it all. I, I can't remember exactly why I picked U.S. Express. I think I like the trucks for real. <laughs> yeah, that's what they did. That's they sent the they sent the young lady, and, and, and I'm sure there was something else, but nothing you know, nothing really comes to mind now. Why, why I picked them? Yeah, they sent the young lady to our school. And uh, she, I mean, she poured the milk, man. I mean, she, she, she poured on the milk. I, I was ready to, I, I was ready to go to U.S. Express that day. That, that's how they, that's how they got me. I just wish that, I just wish that I did my homework a little bit more tighter than what I did before. But like I said, you know, I was a new Jack coming in, and she poured the milk, and I drunk it, and. And yeah, and everything else was history. Well, I didn't get any milk pouring, but you know, I, besides them like firing me, you know, at the end, I, I didn't really like that. But previous to that, you know, I was pretty happy there. But I didn't know no better. Okay. It's one thing. Okay. So what you was? Doing? You know, I didn't really have a. No, nah, for me at the the time, I really didn't so much. I mean, I had a house to go back to, but I couldn't stay there long. Mm-hmm. What was the thing? You know, I was going through a divorce. You get in a groove out there on the road. You know, after you get into it for a few weeks, watch clothes a time or two, you know, you get in a rhythm. I would anyway. All right. And then it's just normal. You know, coming off the road gets you out of rhythm. And, you know, it costs money. You know, out there on the road, if your wheels are turning, you're earning. Mm-hmm. And that's every day, and I'm getting ready to hit the road again. Prior to getting into trucking, what what you was doing? Uh, what you was doing prior to getting into trucking? Dude, I got it wrote down in a notebook somewhere around here. I did a whole bunch of stuff, a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm 46. I think I've been, I've made money 45 different ways. So, <laughs> you know, since I was about six years old. And the punching, the time clock, the being employee, and hopefully you'll get a raise. That I've never really worked out too well in, mm-hmm. in those environments. My, uh, you know, a lot of things I've done it were in sales. So it's more, you know, performance based instead of, you know, hourly. I've always gravitated towards. Was you did you uh, did you, you did you say in uh, one of your videos that you was an insurance guy at one time? For a while, man, I, yeah. I had my life accident, health license, series six and sixty three. You know, I right. did investments and rollovers and that thing. But what I did a whole lot of was life insurance. Okay. And then prior to that, I sold a, a bunch of accident policies. But it would be door to door, business to business, getting referrals from everybody I did business with. You know, and go deep, and that's cool. Here's the bad part about insurance. Mm-hmm. I couldn't stand Christmas, man. Oh, because every Christmas, people wouldn't want to pay their, their life insurance. Or they'd spend all their money on insurance. Could I mean, all, on Christmas spreads, couldn't pay their insurance. So every January, I always had a whole bunch of chargebacks and start the year in the hole. 
happened to me three years in a row. I don't know if that made sense or, or not, <laughs> but it's not a good thing. The wise said that I'd understand. Like, why don't you just write good messages, Jim? You know. During Christmas time, it was it was like it was it was a slow period for you. So how how do selling well, insurance as an, as, an, as an insurance person? Yeah, because no, well, the way insurance works is we sit down together okay. at your kitchen table or at your business. Okay, I bought an eyeball, and then you know, and at the end of it, sign here, you know, cut a check, or <laughs> but there's some kind of agreement, you know, type of thing. Thing and then how do selling insurance work though i mean i i had you know i had the insurance you know people come to me you know i, well, I got it life depends insurance. on the, the how do you guys but make like money? say life insurance well the way life insurance companies make money is they got a whole lot of people paying a premium every single month and hopefully you're not dying. It, you know, somebody's not dying every month. And that happens over the course of years and hasn't been happening for, you know, a century or more. So let's not go into insurance. <laughs> Edit this out. <laughs> you, say, you say let's not go into insurance. <laughs> um, no, man. And, and I tell you, like, I, I was trying to, like, come off the road, man. I swear to God it was because I want to make movies and, like, do cool stuff, you know. But I'm getting ready to go. I lost my train of thought over at US Express at one point. Um you you really did uh you really did enjoy it there. I mean majority like majority of the videos that you did uh with US Express was I mean like I, I said did. You, showed, you know you they showed, had terminals and key locations and you could you know have a little camaraderie with other people and get in a van and go to Walmart or something like that. I, I couldn't tell you who my dispatch was. Back back then, I, I know there was one named Popper at one at one time. But you know, all of them were good. I didn't, you know. But in my opinion, you train your dispatcher to be good. You know, it ain't all just up to them. You know what I mean? It's a it's a two way street as far as that relationship and that communication and that understanding. Well, I always expectation. I I always say uh, I always say if you don't have a good. Uh, if you don't have a good rapport with your with your dispatcher, then your time with the company is not going to be all of that. So it, it was safe to say that you had a good dispatcher. It's funny, man. Uh, like the one I no, but let me just say it anyway. I got this dispatch dispatcher now, man, and he gets on my nerves, and it ain't his fault. It's just because I've been crabby because I've been driving a day cab, man, and I just think about how un efficient that whole process is and how much time I waste getting ready here at the house to get my my Chevy which is at, at one point a while back was like the highlight of my day you know by the time the sun's coming up something like that riding music or an audio book and then I'll get there and they're like dang and you know it's a it's a day camp man, and it's split seating so you know you just have to carry a little bag or whatever to the truck each day instead of you you know you shouldn't be in set up which is what I'm we I mean we, we got we we got way ahead <laughs> so let's let's rewind it back to, to not the crabbier times but let's rewind it back to the good times man let's let's go back um let's go back uh your your unfortunately your 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 end time with US Express was kind of ugly. Um yeah, and you did uh on your channel, you you know, you got you 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 chronicle everything that happened from uh from when you got the ticket all the way up to where you got the U-Haul and you left up out of there. You guys ain't gonna believe this shit, but this will be the last Jim and Boone's truck and journey video because I just got terminated. And you ask, what'd you do now, Jim? Well, it was something I did back in August. You guys remember that bullshit ticket I got for doing 50 miles an hour in what they were calling a 35 mile an hour work zone where- Where were you? Right. Where were you when you got the ticket going through the construction zone? Somewhere in Montana. I don't remember the, the. I mean, it wasn't really in a town. It was pretty rural. So, 
but in Montana. So what happened during that, that whole exchange? Do you remember? I do. I do. And, um, like coming down, you know, a, a hill with, you know, a little bit of slope to it. I wouldn't call it a mountain. And then there was, you know, a bridge down at the bottom. And I see a, a cop mm-hmm. behind the car with his lights on. Mm-hmm. I ease over, you know, one lane and go on by. And then, you know, I'm coming down to the bridge, and here he comes pulling me over. So I pull over, and he told me I was in a 35-mile-an-hour speed zone. I was doing 50 so do, on the fucking interstate. So you, you on Across it, my town. You on the interstate. Did you, you, you didn't. But, okay, okay, let, let, me, let me be honest. There was, like, some men on the bridge, like. Okay. With their little survey thing, you know what I mean? That, okay. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Where they look through a little, yeah, the little camera, surveyor. yeah, the survey and all like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So that, that wasn't was going on, and then, and I was like, "Whoo, I'm going kind of fast," but you know, some survey guys, you know, right there, pretty close by. But okay. Maybe there was flashing signs and things. I'm not sure, but I, I don't really recall anything other. That, the only thing I really noticed is the police car with flashers and then men on the bridge. I was uh, driving a little earlier this morning. I got pulled over. Now, the citation I received was for speeding in a work zone. They had no orange barrels, no orange signs, no cones. The police car over on the shoulder with his lights on prior to the bridge. And then there's a couple of light workers with vest over on the right side of the bridge. So I slowed down, got in the left lane, went by him. Shortly after I'm getting pulled over for doing 50 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour work zone. Guys, that is not good. That's 15 miles an hour over the speed limit, and also speeding in a work zone. And that's when and he, and that's when he told you that it was 35 doing that little cut right there. Work zone, yeah. Wow. It ended up getting reduced to just a nine nine mile an hour over, you know, speeding ticket. Nothing about work zone or anything. But so you, we never made it to court before I was toast. So you was in the midst of you was in the midst of fighting that, and you told U.S. Express, uh, you told U.S. Express about it, and you was in the midst of uh, fighting it. Uh, you unfortunately you 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 got the call to come into the, if I'm not mistaken, it's the PA terminal, right? That's right, Chippin' for. Yeah, so you you got the call to come into the uh, PA terminal, and that's when they gave you the bad news. Yeah, I think it was something along the lines we're gonna have to let you go, and we can't provide you any help other than getting you a greyhound. Other than that, you're on your own. that is, you know what, man? That is crazy. So. You know, it's it, you know you left. Uh, you left a year before I did. Uh, you you left it. You left in what twenty eighteen, right? No, uh, no, I left before that. Let's see. Uh, it was September two thousand sixteen. Oh, sixteen! Damn it, man! Mm-hmm. Are you serious? It was twenty sixteen. 16 because I've been at GMP since December 2016. Okay, okay, because I got I I got terminated from there in 2019. I was like, okay, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe they're gonna write me up or suspend me or mm-hmm. whatever, right? And she goes, and, and she, this one she hit me with the wrecking ball. She goes, well, yeah, we 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 gonna go that route. We're 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 uh we're we're terminating your 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 time with us here. I said, wait, hold up and that you know, I told her I was you know, I'm 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 shocked now. I'm I'm So I thought damn it man, I, I thought it was uh I thought you left about a year earlier than I did. But yeah, my my situation was 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 uh 
was similar uh, by way of them calling me into the terminal and let me know right then and there uh, I needed to clean my truck out um, 24 hours. And then they was going to give me, uh, they wasn't going to get me home. They just gave me $50 on that, on, on the, uh, on that, uh, on the debit card. And that was it. I mean, if it wasn't, to be honest with you, if it wasn't for my son, uh, you know, sending me his uh, credit card, Man, I, I don't know what I would have did. I, I don't know what I would have did. That would have been, uh, that would have been so ugly. But you know, unfortunately, it's it's U.S. Express is a, is is one. You know, it's I've one been and in done a few country. situations. I've been in a few situations, man, where I'm just boom, dropped off somewhere with like without resources, and mm -hmm. I just gotta figure out what what your next next movie is and maybe yeah it's u.s express is unfortunately it's a one and done company though i mean they they really they really don't give you no second chances i mean you you oh, you didn't have no man, other you don't, didn't have don't no let other me, oh, oh. man i i tore up all kind of stuff over the course of my my time there and they gave you plenty of chances right they didn't get they they didn't give me a they didn't give me no chance they they pretty much told me that I mean I never had nothing I never had nothing bad you know just, you know little stuff here and there that you know you got to call and tell them about that maybe the shop might have to fix it a little bit you know knock a mirror off ding a bumper you know that kind of stuff all right all right so we said uh, we said so long to uh, to uh, US Express. And uh, we said hello to Maverick. So, what what made you uh, wanted to go flatbed, bro? Flatbed just seemed a little more badass, and, and I've kind of, you know, see myself as you know, wanting to not be lazy, be energetic. You know, flatbed is definitely that because you're climbing and throwing chains and throwing straps and stuff like that and tighten them down. And Maverick was awesome. Like, all the way around. I can't say anything but good things about Maverick. Their facility there in Little Rock, I believe it is, is gorgeous. And they take good care of you. Um, heck, food's good there, too. And their training center for securement's right there. And the trainer they set me up with, but, you know, I was coming in as an experienced driver but you know i'd never done flatbed and i only had a week like a week and a, a day or two with mm -hmm. a, a trainer and then a truck came open and they're like hey here's a truck you can go ahead and get it now if you want to go ahead and start and i did all right so maverick yeah. now since you I mentioned i had two good weeks out by myself since you mentioned the the securement training uh securement training Give us a little give give us a little yeah. background of of what what was the securement training all about. Well, the proper way to hook the chain in the hook so it don't flip and it's tight and secure. Um, that's a big deal. Like I totally wanted to do it backwards, like every time, like naturally in, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then also, like when you have coils, you got to do a little preparation with some boards, and a mat, and stuff for them to put a, a coil on easily. And there's, you know, different times chains are used and straps are used. You know, metal touches metal. So if there's anything metal, you use the chain. But all of that, and there's so many different scenarios of what could be on, you know, a flatbed trailer that they pick up. But they break it down to, I don't know, like six major ways. But their Qualcomm and PeopleNet, yeah, I mean, it, they probably got iPads or whatever now. But, you know, you could access that in the truck if you needed the refreshers. And they gave, you know, workbooks on all of that. But their, that week securement class was, was really good. How much? How like, much? I did turn a trailer over, but I didn't lose the load. It was secured good. 
How much? How much did they? How, how much did they give you for securement training after that week? I think I think it's a thousand bucks. Okay. Okay. So after, uh, yeah, after- like, um, every week I was with a trainer or securement, it was a thousand bucks. They were like, take as long as you need. You need another week with them. You know, we'll pay you a thousand dollars, but you know, you can make like 13, 1400 or, you know, better, you know, doing your thing. And, and I think maybe I left a, a little earlier because, well, I'm not in Maverick anymore. You know, I wasn't at Maverick very long. So that take, uh, they, it wasn't their fault. Take us, take us to that uh, that fateful night, man. Uh, what happened? Well, it was a long ass day to start off with. I think I woke up in Connecticut, where I'd been for like a a day, just like hanging out at a grocery store wait until I could deliver at this CVS that they were building, like, down, you know, right down the way from where I was was parked. So I got up, and I didn't start my clock until after I was unloaded, okay? But I'd been up a while for that. And, you know, videoed them unloading and all of that kind of stuff, and then hit the road and went to, like, Massachusetts somewhere to pick up lumber, uh, lumber, and it's raining balls, man. It's pouring down rain, but they put all this lumber on there. So I have to get up there and strap that down. I, I didn't have to put a tarp on it or anything, but strap it down and then head to Maryland. And it was like midnight. Mm-hmm. I was a mile away from them. I would stopped a little earlier and showered and, and ate. And my plan was to get to where the delivery was in part but I didn't quite make it there so you can edit this part too. <laughs> um what's your question uh, uh, the the faithful the faithful night uh you know when 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 you you had your unfortunate turnover like you, so you probably hadn't turned a trailer over yet huh you don't yeah, have to yeah you turn yeah the, yeah this yeah that that you fortunate, tell you about it. Yeah, the fortunate night. Yeah, right there when you know you you uh you you drove and and the trailer uh turned over and all that good stuff. What you know, you said it was a long day. So. Yeah, it's, it's Yeah, and, and I was tired and I was uncertain if I turned right like where I did or if it was a little further up, you know, like after you cross the intersection, a, a, a quick road to the right. And that's what it actually was that I needed to do. So I kind of turned and I thought I went wide. Well, I did go wide. Mm-hmm. But the trailer tire, it just went off the pavement. You've probably done that before, right? Where the, it's not on the pavement, it just goes on the dirt you're going around. Yeah. But at this particular spot, it was really, really, really dropped off, man, like crazy. There should have been some, I mean, like a foot or better, like a boom, right right after the, the pavement ends, it dropped, and, and it had been raining, and it was wet, and all of that, and the tire, you know, throw tire just went down that fail, and, well, I, I'm in the cab. I didn't know this was happening. I'm going forward, and I feel it like not wanting to really... You can't see what I'm doing right now, but I'm rocking. But it didn't want to go. And uh, I felt a weird balance, like a shift in like the truck in my seat. And it just stopped and it wouldn't go. So I opened my door to get out. And dude, my back tire over on the the driver's side is off the ground. Like three feet off the ground trucks all like raised up trailer is turned completely over but bent okay. you know up, up at the the front of it but the side of it and the tires are flush to the ground over in that grass part you know off the side of the pavement with l- lumber just securely strapped on yeah that yeah you you showed uh you showed video and you showed pictures 
uh on your on your video that's uh and speaking of which this is the second season of the trucking journey right nah technically there's been five man all right so there's probably three good ones right? yeah but the but uh but the incident with uh with maverick happened in the second season right that's right. Yeah. That's right. So if you guys want to, if you guys want to, uh, if you guys want to check that season out, season two, mm-hmm. episode ten, attitude test. Yep. Is that video? If you guys want to go over to uh, Trucker Jim's uh, channel, uh, definitely go there, subscribe to him. Make sure you subscribe to him and uh, check out the uh, check out the video. One one thing I like about you, Jim. Um, when it when it came to your YouTube and the way you ran it, you was was honest with with everything that you that you did on your YouTube. You know what I'm saying? You you wasn't like my like myself, like me myself. I mean, I I pretty much keep everything to the chest. I mean, I I I, I tell a little bit, but I don't tell all. But what I like about your what I like about your channel, you give a country feel to your channel. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, not not only that you give a country feel to your channel, but you also give you 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 put it together as a storytelling. You know what I'm saying? Every every episode, every episode that you did, you had an intro you had the story, and then you had an outro, and that what made your channel. That what made your channel so to me so interesting. You know what I'm saying? And then when you broke down the seasons and all like that, you you know you did the season one where everybody knows that you know how 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 your 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 camera work and everything was done in the beginning and then season two got better and then season three got better and better and season four and then you know where you at right now man uh, what what was the idea behind uh youtube as far as what you wanted what, what you wanted out of it that's a good question and I've always had an interest in filmmaking and, and TV shows and comedies and things like that. But I was never in an environment or had an opportunity to p- participate in those. Like, I didn't know people that made it. You know, I'm like, well, I like this stuff, but nobody else around me re- really does. And it, it, it was, it was frustrating. Well, when I became a truck driver and I didn't have my wife tell me, you know, I couldn't film her cause she was fat or anything like that. I started making, you know, those YouTube videos with my phone, which I, I'd had video cameras before, but I had really lost all of that when my father's house um, was on fire, but I'd never did any kind of editing. You know, I just recorded, you know, so everything was just like straight out of camera. Back back then, mm-hmm. but you know, out on the road, you have time to mess around with. You know, especially once I, I figured out iMovie and started adding music, and man, I I just couldn't get enough of it. it you know, like some people like to play games and, and do other stuff. I like to edit, you know, video, but to have anything to edit, you know, most of the time I didn't have other people there. So, you know, it started out with me talking and, and showing things with. The audience I had in mind to begin with was was not people I, I didn't know really. It was to my mom and um, to my son and, you know, friends I went to high school with and things like that to just show I'm not in my small little town. With, with the filmmaking and, and, and your YouTube and all like that, uh, like you say, you started off with, with, with the camera, uh, with the phone. But then you upgraded to uh to the camera. So what's what's the what's what's the cameras uh that you that you upgraded to since then? And what, what man, I still I still <laughs> I still got this same camera. But um, 
It's the Canon P6i. I bought it with the uh, the kit lens, the 18 to 35 that comes with it. But I've been wanting to get it and wanting to get it, but I had to get more than a camera. I had to get you know the microphone stick on top. It's got to have good audio. Mm. And then I had to get a gorilla pod, you know, too, to go with it, so it could be running gun. So it wasn't just you know the camera. I had to get a few memory cards, you know, mm-hmm. to get, to go with it. But I'd already got the MacBook, pre, you know, previously, and I'd started editing what I had filmed with my phone, and I, I was trying to play around with the GoPro and other stuff, but, you know, edit them on the on a computer instead of a phone, and then added the camera. But I'd stopped in Knoxville, Tennessee, on a Friday. I'd finally had you know enough money to get everything because it was about eleven hundred dollars for the, the whole setup that day. It cost it cost me about. It cost me about fourteen. I say it cost me about fourteen hundred when I got the Canon T six or not the six. I got the Canon T seven I. Uh, I brought that out. Okay. With, yeah, I brought that out with me over the road for like maybe three months when I was out, and then I pretty much, I pretty much got a smaller camera, a couple of GoPros, and I just gave. My, uh, I want a Sony A7, the A7 III, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I that's I, I got something similar to it's that. $3,500 camera. Yeah, well, no, I didn't know. Yeah, I just got something similar. I ain't, I ain't get that one. <laughs> Did not get that one. But I gave my son, uh, my, my T7i, and he went on to do great things with it. So, uh, I'm glad I was able to uh, help jumpstart his photography career. This ain't the same camera now. It's a different microphone. And this tripod I've got, Sean, oh, my God. It is the greatest tripod for running gun, get it done. Uh, things that's by the peak, peak design. The one I got is aluminum. There's a carbon fiber one as well. Like, look it up when you get a chance. And... I can go from, you know, a nice handheld that I can maneuver in all different types of ways. I can kind of hold it like a machine gun and, and record if I need to and, you know, keep it steady or stand up or go to a full tripod. And it's got this really neat quick release system so I can pow, you know, get mm-hmm. it set up pretty quickly or, you know, set it up down low to get a shot. You'll yeah. see it in the upcoming vlog that well, it should should start up in October. All right, so we come in. So, so we coming up with a new season. Yeah, um, I'm gonna buy a truck. Okay, okay. So that wait, that's the Jim. That's the announcement. What's what's the big announcement, Jim? Yeah. Well, it all begins with buying a truck. Okay. None of the other things would happen without the truck. And how excited I am on the day that I buy this truck and no longer am a company driver. Having to, I don't know, be worried about what dispatch wants. You know what I mean? What well, they need. Okay. It's, okay. It's different uh, when you're an owner operator. Okay. Trucker Jim about to get the truck. Now you talked about that. You talked about that some time ago because, you know, you, you've been a company driver uh, for all these hey, years. Hey, here's the deal, though, man. Like, it's kind of a day late, dollar short kind of thing, which, I, you know, I ain't going to say it's always that way for me because that's negative talk. But this ain't the first time this sort of thing has been experienced by me. But GMP used to, like, sell trucks after they're not company trucks anymore cheap as shit man some of them under twenty thousand dollars um but definitely in the 20s less than 30s you know in that five six hundred thousand dollar you know t680 like the one i drove today um good truck though um but they don't do that anymore when nfi came in like not we're we're out of the truck selling business you know because they wasn't gmp wasn't making no money they were just doing as good as they could for their drivers to get another owner operator, you know, running their freight was their main focus. But I'm going to see if they can maybe do that one more time. Okay. That's what's up. So being a company driver for, uh, for as long as you've been, 
you you have been with G and P. Uh, you you got with them right after, right after the Maverick incident, and yeah. by the looks of it, man, I mean you you really had, well you 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 have a great career with with G and P uh, G and P trucking. You probably don't even know how great, man. Um, no, I don't. Tell us. When, when when I was at orientation, you know, Clifton Parker, you know, the president, you know, came in and was talking to us. And somebody in the class recognized me from, from my videos. Of, I, I don't know. I said something. And he said, I know where you are now. You know, I can't remember what he said or whatever. But the subject of my video came up in the orientation, and um, I don't know. They pulled them up and played one of them. I don't remember which one it was, but I, don't know, I think it was a pretty cool one. But Mr. Parker from that day was completely supportive of me making content, like wherever, with GNT. And all he said is just don't embarrass us and talk bad about it. Okay. Now, being uh, – I had – Free range, man. After you know, getting <laughs> and man, like I, I tore some stuff up at GMP too. You know, back then, knocked the trailer door off. I mean, a couple of things, knocked the mirror off. Um, I didn't really talk about them too much. Well, I talked about a few of them, but not all. But and there was even a few times where I got charged for some of the damage I did and. We have like a thousand dollars coming out on a paycheck a little bit at a time, but, but they never fired me. But they they've been real, real supportive of you, though. They have, man. Um, and in 2019, I became the media director for for GMP. I wasn't okay. driving. Oh, well, I could well, drive. Well, and wait I got a minute, paid wait, 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 Jim, Jim, hold up, wait. You be what now? Hold up now. You know, hold up now. You. Hold up, you, you need you, to look it up. Go to YouTube. G and P. I got sixty videos on there, and they're fantastic. They're better than most trucking companies have for their drivers to know what's up. So you, a, for you know, so you, what drivers need to know. So you are the media director for G and P now. Okay. No, no, no. I'm not. No. no. Okay. There's no such thing. There's no such thing anymore. I was up until like September of um, last year. And I needed to take a break from it at the time and like go hit the road. Because I had an elbow surgery coming up in October. And I wanted to, you know, hit the road. But during that process, I, I didn't really, I think I made one more, maybe two more videos after that for GNT. One of them was at Reef Across America. Yeah, I've seen you know, that. You know, that's one. as the acquisition started coming together with NFI and everything. Mm -hmm. So they were kind of like, all right, we don't really care about making videos right now. You know, we're getting bought out. Okay. Okay. What was the. Now, I did a. I, I did a mate. I, I did a make the call video. Uh, I think that was in season two. I, no, season three. You talked to Brandon Rainwater, right? Yep. I sure did. I enjoy, I, I actually enjoyed See, I my know conversation. Two of the dudes you done called on that. Yeah. Brandon and then what's that dude for Maverick? Uh, Ryan. Brady or Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Right. Ryan, Ryan from Maverick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was Ryan. It was Ryan from Maverick. And that, 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 that yeah, that, that call experience right there was not good. Uh, and, and br I think it was either Brian, uh, Brandon from GMP. So yeah, man, that, yeah, I had a, I had a very, very good conversation with, uh, with Brandon. Uh, as a matter of fact, I man, think he, Brandon, I, you know, he's a stand up Tom, you know, he's a stand up comedian. Yeah, that's Brandon why Brandon Rainwater, you can find him on YouTube. That's why I said, that's why the conversation. I got a, a video. Yeah, that's why I said that's why the conversation was so was so was so great, man, because we 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 I had a good time when uh when I was talking to him. So yeah, I sort of piggy I sort of piggyback off of your off of your video 
when uh when you did the you know when you came and did the video to let the people know that GMP was hiring and all like that. So you know, a couple of subscribers seen your video, and I seen your video, and then subscribers started suggesting GMP, and I was like, cool, let me go in and call. So. Yeah, that that was a that was GMP a great call. GMP has some good content, man. Totally, GMP has some good content on their channel. There hadn't been a video up in about a year, but there's still some good stuff. And NFI, you know, they're they're big, man. They got all kind of stuff going on. How you know a lot of office? How did you? How did you get? Well, how how did the drivers feel? Including yourself, because GMP changed so much since you've been there. I think when you first got there, you had a guarantee pay every week, and then I think maybe you came back in another video about a year. Was it six, seven, eight, yeah. nine, ten? About a year later, and you said that they took away the the, the guarantee pay. Uh, they they also GMP still ain't figured out how they want to pay people. <laughs> and I, I'm learning. I, I tell you, from my, my media time, mm -hmm. it, man, I'm, I'm so lucky. I really am as far as uh, what it exposes me to, uh, as far as starting to understand the bigger picture of, you know, the whole operations of it. But the bottom line, however much money the company can bring in from the customer is in direct proportion to how much the drivers can be paid. Okay. Okay. And I know that sounds like a no shit, but but it's it's true. Okay, that's what's up. So Trucker Jim, man, so the big so the 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 huge announcement is you you're actually buying the truck. What 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 made you come to this uh big decision, bro? Well, cause I, I kept thinking of other scenarios because I've got a pretty good little setup. Two weeks out of the month, I do video work mm -hmm. and I, I get a salary for it. And if I go out of town, like I get paid mileage when I drive my vehicle, like when I went to Charleston and any food I buy, I just turn in the receipts and I get that stuff back. But what I do is uh, I'm, I'm recording stuff. Like um, they've got all these different accounts like in charleston for instance it's gnt and also carolina cartage company which uh all of them are owner operators and they do the port and the drayage stuff mm -hmm. but i got an interview from each manager one from both sides and each one of them picked i think three drivers that they thought it'd be good for me to meet and and I met with all three of those, those drivers, got them all, you know, on video. And also I'll get some cool B-roll of trucks coming in and out of the gate. You know, I'll set up and I, I don't even need auto no more, man. I'll put it on manual set and mess with my exposure and everything. Mm -hmm. And with all of that footage, I upload that to a shared server with NFI so their people in New Jersey that do their Instagram videos and YouTube videos and all of that stuff have a a fresh pool of content to work with. So and the driver interviews are pretty outstanding. So by you interviewing these uh owner operators kind of kind of gave you a renewed sense of uh uh a renewed well, sense it of is uh, because because I would only do that stuff, and I was up in Bartstown, Kentucky, a while back. The video stuff, I love it, man. It's awesome, man. You know, I'm I'm around drivers, you know, a good bit, but also, you know, the higher up uh, in the company. So, you know, I'm learning a lot, and it's exciting, and a little travel with it, and the money's good, but it's not full time yet. So the other two weeks, I have to do G and T. Well, I have been doing G and T local stuff and, and and I don't like it <laughs> so with all so with all that I said get, it just gave you, I it, get to work out it's uninspiring 
And I don't video it at all because I'm in a day cab, you know, split seats. It's too much of a pain in the ass, you know, to carry all. Because if I'm going to make video, man, I want to make cool, and you know what I mean? So, well, and, and it, it's just not worth the hassle. So, and, you know, me not creating makes me get free. So with all really that, just place. gave you a, a, a renewed sense of uh, – of of jubilee uh a renewed sense of jubilation to just go ahead and just buy your own truck and then you can pretty much uh do what you want to do as far as the loads you want to uh pick and that's the biggest thing you- is do what i want to do and and you know the thing i there's a lot of things i didn't like about being a company driver Especially like you meet somebody out in a bar at a family reunion or whatever, and you say, I'm a truck driver. And, and then, you know, as, as you get into it, and when you have to say, yeah, I'm driver number blah, 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 at this big-ass trucking company, you know, okay, oh, we haul for this stuff. And, you know, that that's all right, I guess. But, you know, when you have your own truck, plus the kids want to come look at it. You know what I mean? That's That's, that's real deal there. All right. You so, care whatever, you know, hook up whatever you want to. I mean, you, like, I'm going to start out anyway doing this Texas freight going back and forth, back and forth until I decide, you know, I don't like this anymore. I want to do something else. And then I will. And, I, and my, my, my big plan on, on this is I want to take my son out on the road with me and fall on the road, fall in love with the road like I him to and then get him in CDL school then get him back on my truck training we team for a little bit and then maybe you know he, he can do that much of the time because I've got you know some other stuff I, I want to get to but you know have a truck with my son all right that's what's up but also having one I can video any kind of way I want at any time instead of having to worry about dispatch being okay with it. You know now, what I mean? Now That's let me ask now let me ask you this. Are you are are you um uh, are you going to a outside uh are you doing all of this on the outside like going to a dealership buying your truck from yet. there or are I you going to lease? I hope not. I hope not. No, hell no. I'm not going to leave. Um, what I want to do, GMP just has stopped doing it. But taking one of the trucks that's out of the fleet, that's reached the depreciation thing that's been kept up maintenance by, and buy it from GMP, and it'll just be a, you know, a straight sale that that's financed. And they, and Rick Drennan, like I, I'll probably see him tomorrow. And, and he figures it all up and, you know, has a sheet and shows you what your, your cost of it is. But they had just got out of the, the truck selling business. But I'm hoping since, I don't know, I put put those 60 YouTube videos up and I'm Trucker Jim or whatever, maybe we can uh, do it one last time. But the biggest reason they're getting out of it, which, you know, it wasn't a money maker for them at all. But say if I did buy this truck, that damn thing, the motor fell out of it or something bad, you know, my first trip down to Laredo, they don't cover this, I don't have any money, and I'm in a, just a shit show of a situation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it kind of it puts a damper on that relationship I would have with GMP. Like, suckers sold me a lemon, you know, kind of you know negative feeling, and they just would like to avoid that and let people get their trucks from all the other places people get trucks from, you know? Okay, okay. So when you hopefully it's been checked out, that's gonna. So I'm not sure yet, I, but I, I still I, I want to take that chance and get one from them if I can. If it's not, I'll. Uh... Well, NFI has like truck sales things, but like the closest ones in Charlotte, they didn't have KW, and I, I don't really want to freight my own thing. All right, and there are some Volvos. Right. But uh. But I'm looking for a trigger pretty soon, man. I want to be uh up and running, you know, by mid October. When you when you get your truck and you jump into it, you know, you you get your own truck. Are you going to continue pulling for NFI slash G uh, GMP, or are you gonna you gonna try and spread your wings somewhere else? No, no, no. Uh, G- 
GMP and NFI, because my main motivation with NFI is to do video work for them. Mm-hmm. Just the the whole thing with having to be a truck driver half the time and the other, I don't know. I, I could suck it up and do it, but I hate it. And I don't really want to do things that I hate to do, do something I, I love. And me buying a truck that I can get for, you know, 20 something thousand dollars if this works as far as getting one of GNP's trucks that's in the sweet spot of retiring from the fleet. And my lease is up at the house that I'm living in now, which, doesn't really hold a sentimental value. This is just a, a place that's too big and it's cost too much and there ain't nobody here that I love. You know what I mean? So there's no need for me to be here. And it, I would be much better suited in the truck as an owner-operator. And I've kind of struggled to find like something I, I think would be re- very interesting content-wise here recently. But, well, that's going to change when, you know, Coming an owner operator and you know sharing the experience of 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 that and since i'm an owner operator i'm probably going to start the first week you know by myself but my second trip down i expect i i'm, I'm gonna start having somebody with me okay and but you got to get somebody that i don't want to give away too much you you got to get somebody that you can trust not no. good. No, no, no. You, okay, I, I guess I do need to explain because you're going to think something. No, I'm talking no. about something that I'm not. No. no okay, go no, ahead. I want to make blogs like you ain't never, never seen before, and also I want to continue my media stuff that I do every other week with with NFI. Mm-hmm. You know about quantum driver interviews and and cool looking B-roll of trucks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I want to do that while I'm an operator, owner operator going down to Texas, but I'm going to have another person with me, which it would either be my son or this like oh, female okay. friend of mine, that's just artsy and cool. And they're going to be a camera person. Oh, and okay. Wait oh, okay. and see. You heard it here first on lockout, man. I'm going to make the greatest backing video the internet's ever, ever seen. So while you know, they're out on the road with me. Every time I back up into anything, you know, they're going to get out and record it. They have at least one angle from it. And then I'll start storing, putting it back, you know, in a folder. And I'm going to accumulate a lot of footage of me backing up. And also, you know, maybe some other trucks backing up when I have the opportunity to get, you know, a good one. And I'll have my drone up and, and flying soon, so... Oh yeah, man, I, I, I forgot all. I, I, the way, but, I forgot all about but, your drone. Your drone, but, <laughs> your drone went through went through some well, stuff. <laughs> it's messed up now, man. Like it'll fly, but the footage sucks because it, it vibrates and you can't control the gimbal good. And then me and my neighbor done took it apart a few times, and I need to send it to somebody that knows what the hell they're doing. Probably run me about three hundred bucks. I want to get a new one, man. Don't you have? Uh, don't you still got the warranty with DJI? Uh, because I know the first time you had an issue with it, you sent no. it in. Negative. Oh, and okay. I bought it secondhand off eBay to begin with. Oh, okay. okay. DJI just fixed it for me from my, my first crash, which happened about five minutes after getting it up in there. Mm-hmm. I... I was it? I don't have a concrete, crystal clear plan, but I'm gonna get my drone license too. Is is it a learning? So I, you know, I can fly it wherever I'm. Is it is it a learning curve with with flying drones? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. It it ain't something you just are awesome at. I don't care who you are. Because I was thinking about I, I was thinking about getting Especially one. Especially to be smooth. I was thinking about getting one. I seen all these tr- uh these trucker YouTubers, you know, got drones and all like that, and you know they they getting drone footage and all like that. And I was like, hmm. I said I I, I want one, but then I started saying to myself like, yeah. How long? How long that's gonna? How long's the novelty gonna wear off 
you know, after I after I use it for a couple of <laughs> for a couple of times. <laughs> so I decided not to. You know, to, that like, depends on what you end up doing, man. Um, I kind of like to throw a little bit in there, but it's easy to overdo it, you know, dude. All right. That's... But I'm getting another one, especially for the back video. All right. But that back, and that'll be a, a slow process of accumulating, you know, a lot. Because this is going to be the best back video on the internet. Well, that's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Well, Trucker Jim, man, I, I want to first say I definitely appreciate you coming on to the show, man. Uh, definitely. Like I said, I've been, a, I've been a subscriber. I've been a follower. Uh, I've been following you throughout your trucking journey on uh, on YouTube. You know, I, I, I was with you doing some of the, you know, some of your, your health issues and all like that. So... I am damn glad that you're, you know, that you're in good health and all like that. You kind of have, you kind of have me and everybody else a little scared when you went to the uh, hospital. Uh, something about, I, I don't know. Well, what it, that's been okay. But, now, yeah. before, I do have one kind of bad thing going on. Uh, I got gum disease my, and my mouth has like, I don't know, a lot of infection and bacteria in it. Before I... But, you know, go out on the road on the truck. I need to get three teeth pulled, extracted. Definitely take care of your grill, bro. Got to, got to take care of your grill, man. That's that's. This, this, I, I'm this, a, this is about two thousand dollars taken care of. I, I, I know, you know they, I know, I man. Know, I, I was. I was in. Put new ones in later. Yeah, I was in sticker shock when they when when. The dentist came to me and told me how much work that I had. I just told him, I was like, look, man, just just pull the ones in the back and I'll do my damnedest to make sure I keep the ones in the front still good. So, so yeah, man, definitely, uh, you know, definitely uh, keep your, keep that grill together, man. Trucker Jim, everybody. You know, that's fun. Oh, oh, sorry. We can go ahead and rewind that. Go ahead. What was you about to say? Well, if we're gonna end it. I probably want to say something other than my gum disease. No, go right? ahead. Go Are ahead. Are we wrapping up now? No, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> no, go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. Yeah, but gum disease, man, that sucks. <laughs> I've been using mouthwash so much and brushing my teeth and trying to avoid sugar, but it's so hard to avoid sugar when you got a big box of gummy snacks. Nah, there. bro, you gotta, you gotta stop, you gotta stop the sugar, man. Uh, I, I had, you know, I like I said, I me, I, I did, the, I did, you know, like I said, I'm a type two diabetic. So I, I definitely had to, I definitely had to stop the sugar for, you know, other than, other than grill reasons. But, you know, I had to stop my sugar because of, uh, of my blood level, but you definitely gotta, you gotta stop the sugar, bro. <laughs> you gotta stop it or eat or eat it in moderations, man. You know, eat it in eat it in moderations. You know, hold on. I yeah, I agree with Don. Don says, uh, "Smile is totally different with no teeth, bro." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you got it. Got for sure. Got to take these care. Are in, these are in the back, but I need to take care of it before it, you know it spreads. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's man. coming up probably probably before the week's out. You gonna try and do you try and do all that before hey, you get? Did anybody have a problem with AT and T cell service today? Uh, I'm on T Mobile. Yeah, another driver. I'm on Our T. Cell phones were out. Yeah, I'm on yeah, T. We AT and T. We were out of out of service an hour and a half. Yeah. Oh, you might. You know what you can do because you know T Mobile. Uh, we had a we had a blackout. Uh, for like about two hours. What you can do is probably call T uh T Mobile. You could probably call AT and T and see if they can, you know, cover you for for that little time. I I called T Mobile and they, you know, they reverted about twenty five dollars off my bill. So you might be able to uh you might be able to see if you could get something out of that if you was in the blackout for uh an hour and a half. Well, Trucker Jim, again, man, like I said, man, thank you very much for coming on, man. The big announcement 
that my man made on the channel is uh, he's going to be an owner operator, y'all. Yeah, he's about to be an owner operator. Yeah, well, Five years in the making. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity. I wanted to, I wanted to hear myself say it out loud, and <laughs> it still sounds like a good idea. It sounds like it sounds like steps in the process. But, Listen, but I intend to. Uh, I don't know what, what the you know starts being a thing. I, I mean, I got my camera pointing at me right now. It's just not turned on. I'm on the verge of starting the, you know, a regular vlog up. I'm thinking kind of a three times a week kind of thing. Five minute videos, no longer than 10, maybe a weekly live, you know, something regular again. Out so, of the road. As far as your, as far as your YouTube, uh, your YouTube goes, um, and you, you, you going to start, you, you going to start the trucking journey, uh, season five. Slash owner operator back. I mean, back up when you get, you know, when you get the truck. Well, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure uh, of all the details yet, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna start it up. All right, that's what's up. Now, what's the goal? Which, um, it'll be October. All right. So what's what's the goal? Of what's what's the go what what's the how can I say this? What's the feeling of YouTube uh for you? Because I you know, we me and you been in me and you been in uh well, I've been in it a little bit longer, but I took it serious when I became a truck driver. So I took it a little bit serious. But I have seen uh some drivers come in that started YouTube and they shit just blows up, man. Like, what the hell are we doing wrong? You know, remember that, remember that, uh, what was that guy I name? don't look at it that way. I hope mine don't blow up. But what was, the, what was the guy, the, 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 ag, the, the facility, I can't pronounce his name, uh, Vasily. Vasily? Yeah. I mean, when he started, when I seen yeah. him. He had like maybe at some amount of subscribers, but then a couple of videos later, it was like, dude, it's like five thousand. A couple of videos later, he's like ten thousand, and uh, you know, I'm over here like, damn, what are we doing wrong? Nah, it's just sometimes you get you shared things pop. I've had I did an Aldi video the other day that had. It had over 10,000 views the first day. And and I think it's because I shared it on an Aldi Facebook group. But no other video after that I ever tried to put there again to duplicate those kind of results, you know, would happen. Just things pop, and it really did with him. I, I know what you're talking about. When I, first, when I first saw his video, it was in response to something. One of the other guys did a music video, Lil Dog. And both of them were, you know, pretty, pretty great videos with music in them. And I what think is, he had maybe six. I think what, he only had like six hundred subscribers. I think what, he started a channel to do that. What? Whatever happened to is what it was? Ball. And it, I, I, my, whatever happened? I have no idea. I don't follow nobody. I don't even know what's going on with you, man. I don't follow <laughs> nobody. A while back, I kind of like. Like unsubscribe to everything truck and every other truck driver, YouTube trucker. I just eliminated myself from it a while back. I mean, so I'm clueless. I mean, you wanted to talk about, you know, yeah, we we don't even have, yeah, like to associate. With, yeah, but. we we don't even have to. I understand, bro. You you don't even have to touch on that. I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of drivers out here that that I don't mess with. You know what I'm saying? I don't have no issues with nobody. I just don't mess with, uh, just don't mess with them. You know what I'm saying? You I mean, know, I, I follow, I follow, like, I yeah. follow Little Dog for a little bit, but you know, after that, I, I went to his page and like, poof, every video that he made, he he, it's gone, like woof, you know. And then of course, uh, then of course the 
the unmentioned guy that we won't mention, you know, you know, I follow, you know, I follow him for a little bit, but then I unsubscribe and, but his stuff still pops up in my timeline. So, but, um, but yeah, man. I'm sure yeah. he's probably still doing well if he's still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's still, he, he's still doing the damn thing over there. See, uh, I, I'm a little different, man. Like I don't have this big desire to be some big YouTuber and have a bunch of people tell me, I don't know how much they like my videos and, and, and all of that. Yeah, because I don't know all that fan stuff. I mean, you might, you probably get some of it too. Uh, and people talk about their kids, you know. I don't know that. That ain't really why I, I'm here. I I'm really doing it for for practice. I want to make bigger things. I I do it. I I do it. I, 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 I know, just stream on their TV. They're selling stories. And, yeah, I just I just do more YouTube. Like Netflix series instead of a YouTube video. I, I just do YouTube as, as Well, I'm doing hobby. it for now because I don't have anybody from Netflix and all these stories saying, hey, try the gym. We need you. Or come help us out. That never, ever happens. You know, so if I sit around waiting on people to invite me to my dreams and my projects, you know, I mean, it'd be cool if it happened, but it happened. So what YouTube gave me a chance is I could make something and put it up and there wasn't nobody telling me it wasn't good enough to go up. You know, I put it up and I said it was good enough. You know, I didn't have to seek someone else's approval to, to put it out there and, you know, share my art or my right. thoughts. Well, that's what's up. Trucker Jim, everybody. Jim, man, congratulations! Thank you. Congratulations on um, on your endeavors. Uh, you know, congratulations on uh, becoming an owner operator. Uh, well, they hadn't happened yet, but I figure I'll put it out there on your podcast and speak it into existence. So well, there you uh, go. That's how you that's do what it, I want man. To that's how you do it. You, and I'm you prepared speak to. It. You, so. you speak it. You you speak it. It will happen. Uh, much success to you, man. Definitely. Uh, my prayers, uh, my prayers right, is well, keep up the creative work. You I have will. Been persistent. I will. I will. My, my prayers is with boom, man. Uh, uh, hope, uh, hope for a Thanks. speedy recovery and all like that. Um, definitely. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, keep, uh, keep up, keep on, keep, keep on keeping on, bruh. Keep on trucking. There you All go. All right, well, hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate you, you know, us doing this tonight. It was fun. You're very welcome, sir. And I, like I said, we'll, I'll we'll get, do it again. Yes, we will. We most definitely will, bro. We most definitely will. So I'll holler yeah. at you in a bit, man. You stay safe tonight. Trucker Jim. <laughs> yes, sir. Coming into play. About to get that truck. He's about to get that truck, man. That boy about to do the damn thing. We been uh we I, I say we been side by side trucking for just about the the same time. Uh five years. Five years or so. Um he, he only the good thing about him though is that he only been at three companies. Well, technically two because he's still with the current company. So he's still with the current company. So uh, U.S. Express, Maverick, and, uh, and he's with GMP. He found success with GMP. I mean, he got actually he got there and and um, and pretty much blew up. <laughs> pretty much blew up well that's it for this episode of the lockout men podcast if you guys enjoyed this conversation that i had with trucker jim please hit that like button let youtube know that you fuck with me and the lights are free but you can also subscribe comment share and hit that bell and that all button 
I do answer all the comments, so you definitely could get it in with me. I will. I appreciate the LOM community being in the stream tonight. So thank you to you. I mean, thank you to you guys and to you people that's, you know, that's watching and listening. Thank you to you. If you want to support the channel, you can do that by hitting me up with the uh, with some coffee. The coffee link is in the description below, along with the cash app. Hook a brother up with some coffee, man. I, I'm just saying. D Nitty, I know you hear me, bro. I know you hear me. Yo, by the way, I am heading down to uh, Oklahoma next month. So I will be heading down to Windstar to do my staycation. So I'll be down there uh, for a weekend. If you guys is coming down, well, this video is like going to be like, like late, but for you guys that's listening to the stream, I will be down in Oklahoma at the Windstar Casino uh, next month. I'm not sure of the date uh, or the weekend, probably the middle of the month, I will be there. So if y'all hanging out at Windstar or hanging out in Oklahoma, come and holler at me over at the truck parking lot over at uh, Windstar Casino. All right? And on that note, that's it. I am done. You guys have a blessed one, and I will come back at y'all with another video. Peace. Searching, 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 searching.